Hi, my name is Galena. I am 24 years old, living in Reading. Um, I am a fashion design graduate, currently working in London in the fashion industry as a um, denim designer. Okay, so what are my biggest achievements? Um, so biggest achievements would be getting into uni. That's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's a big one. Um, because the build up to that point was actually quite, yeah, the, big, the build up to getting into uni was, was quite long. Because I mean, most of my friends, in when it got to A levels, a lot of people already knew what they were doing and they went straight, straight into uni, like doing all their, you know, personal statements and UCAS in um, year 13. But while I was in year 12, I was kind of in this limbo between, okay, should I do what I enjoy doing, which is something creative, or should I combine it with something a bit more academic and or business side of things? So I decided actually to um, do a foundation course after after A levels and then go into uni. But then the foundation course, instead of it being a year, I decided to do a two year course in fashion just to refine my skills. And it was the um, at the time when I was reading, you know, the qualifica like qualifications and what the course would entail, it was much more better than doing a one year course. So I decided to do two. But two years when all your friends have gone uni and you know, you've gone back to college, it was just, it was long, it, it was long. And that was actually the same, <laughs> the same time when um, they were increasing tuition fee. So I was going to uni the, with like the first set of people who were going to be paying triple the amount for tuition fee. But yeah, we got into uni and grad getting through uni was, was something else, you know, long nights, spare coffee, obviously a decaf. And um, yeah, just a lot of hard work. But we got through it, we thank God. And coming out of uni now was just to find a job. And with the statistics of graduates getting a job in their profession after uni was, you know, obviously like so small. So I didn't want to stress myself. I remember in year, third year, I just kept on saying, listen, as because I'm doing fashion design, what I can do when I leave uni, I can work, do any other job on the side while you know, just freelancing and finding more internships or just collab collaborating with people um, just to keep me going. So I don't want to stress myself if I don't get an exact job that I want in industry right off the bat. I can definitely work my way up because experience is the most important thing. But I mean, after coming out of uni now and I've rinsed out my student loan and everything, um, it, it got to a point where I was working, but it wasn't fulfilling nothing. So I had to start I thought, let me actually just start looking for fashion jobs. Let me look at all these websites while I was looking for internships before. And lucky enough, I think five months down the line, I found a particular job that wasn't necessarily directly linked to what I wanted to go into, but it was in the fashion industry, in jeans and denim. And after a couple of interviews with a few people and and um, long trips up to Preston, because <laughs> that's where the company was based, I got the job and luckily, lucky enough as well, the job, um, the team I was meant to be working with was actually going to be in London rather than Preston. So I wouldn't have had to move or nothing and I was able to stay at home. So that right there was the biggest blessing for 2015. Um, I think, yeah, this month is now one year since I've been working for the company I'm in now. So it's actually been a reminder of how, how far I've come and how um, persistence and just trying to stay active has helped out because when you sit down and you look at the situation but if you meditate on a situation that isn't so great at the time it it may drown out your passion passion it may drown out your motivation so i think yeah just trying to keep busy trying to like keep looking and still being active in the industry helped me out a lot so yeah, getting a job was the biggest achievement. Yeah. Okay, so um, what is my biggest failure? Um, would probably be 
and as much as I did say about being active, there were times where I was really complacent in, um, uh, I don't want to say just in uni, but um, in my in my drive in in the industry in general, like just taking things a little bit too easy at times, because. Because I think at, at first going through school, you have a plan, you know, you know, you're going through um, GCSE, A level, and then what, whether it's a foundation or not, and then you get into uni and yeah, cool. So going through education was the easiest thing. But now coming out of education and then having to figure out what you're doing or where you're going. And um, after you get a job, you're like, wow, so is this it? So in, in as much as my getting the job in itself was a blessing and was a big achievement. But in that, there were times when I was a little bit complacent, when I was a little bit, I don't know, just taking things as they were. And I think that fire in me slowly started dying out. The experience that I'm getting from this job that I'm in is amazing. So being in this middle ground where I can work with designers, work with buyers and also work with factory. It's great, but I think I was just going through the routine of a nine to five, just trying to get into that because obviously I'd never really done that before. So now that I'm doing it, I'm just getting into routine and I'm just trying to get through the job itself and get through all the roles and the task. I found myself just losing the excitement that I once had for fashion that I once had for being creative and you know in the industry you have to keep your creativity going so allowing compl com complacency or complacency allowing yourself just to go with the flow and go with the current and losing drive is is a big setback because sooner or later everything is going to be so mediocre sooner or later you're not actually going to be setting goals or setting new aims or being able to push yourself to those goals as much as you want to so it got to i think september and i'd already been in the company for like nine months and it was going well but um even even my energy like my managers were come up and they were like oh yeah you're good like we see your potential but you know, you can you can do more, you know, you can push yourself, you don't have to wait for us, you can, there's so much more you can do, you can gain. And I was like, wow, so I'm just here just doing this and people see that I have potential, but I just don't, I'm not pushing myself enough. So yeah, not pushing myself and getting a little bit too settled and not running after something like I had been doing during education, during school, like I always knew I was going to get to graduation. There was always a new goal to run after. So now it's just always about setting yourself them goals just to keep yourself on the track, keep yourself going. Yeah. So from where I am now in life, <laughs> looking back, what would I have changed on my journey? Um, what would I have changed or what would I have done differently? It would probably be um, not holding back or not being fearful in in doing certain things or in um, setting goals. Like, I feel like the world is your oyster and there's so much out there that if you're always holding back, it's just going to slow you down. And I had so many moments where I want to do something, but I was scared because it was like, oh, you don't know the right person or you don't have the money for it or just anything. You always find excuses. Like when, when fear creeps in, you justify that fear with anything until sometimes it may even just be you talking about like it, it being someone else. Like, oh no, that person won't allow me. Or what would these people think? And I think that's the worst thing. And that was bad for me where, um, I would want to either do certain projects or I'd want to design or make clothes for certain people. Even now, I think fear sometimes creeps in and I just need to like overcome that. But I've noticed that from my journey or looking back at um, myself from school and in college, the, the, those achievements that I had before came from me not being afraid or came from me just stepping out. I'm like, you know what? I, I like this. I'm going to do it. So... If I was able to achieve so much from those moments I stepped out, think about how much more I could have achieved if I would have just followed through with even those other plans or other projects that I wanted to do, but I was afraid that maybe it would be a bit too ambitious or it would be a bit too um, 
too risky. You you would never know how good. Yeah, you'll never know how good you'll be if you don't push yourself. Or you'll never know how many doors you can open or how many doors will be opened if you don't just take the step. And I think it's really about, yeah, just taking that step in faith because it, you're always just going to be saying what if and having the guilt or having that regret from time and time again when you look back in your life and you're like, man, if only I'd done that or what if I would have done that? Imagine how far I would have been. We are way too young and we have so much exposure now with like media and with you know the internet and technology to see what other people out there are doing that we ourselves should be given that motivation to be like wow oh, you know what let me just do it because you have testimonies and stories of other people who've done it that you shouldn't feel any type of way because they're human <laughs> just like you they have 24 hours in a day just like you like if Beyonce got 24 hours in a day yeah right we can all do do something and be big in what we're trying to do as well. So yeah, I would have definitely changed the idea of me holding myself back or me being fearful. Okay, so um, have you felt pressure from society in, in achieving and becoming who you are? Um, yes, <laughs> pressures are definitely there. Um, I think for me, probably the biggest, the biggest pressure was going into a career or going into an industry that was probably not new, but wasn't common in, um, wasn't, wasn't common one for my parents, like as, as, as something that, you know, you're going to go and pay for, like pay good money to get into for it to be fashion you know some of my not not my parents but some of my parents peers looked at it as would you really be able to to get a return from how much you're going to be investing because education is an investment and with some courses most times it's guaranteed that you know once you put in the money when you come out a job and then paychecks are going to be coming through. You're going to be able to not even worry about paying back student loan. Like it's going to be okay. So when it's something creative, there is a worry from a lot of people from who, who think that you know that this subject or this career that you go this industry is a cutthroat industry and may not pay you back the way you expect. If you just go off of something that is um, oh a hobby like. You know, sometimes just do a hobby on the side and, you know, do a career that will put food on the table. And that was basically the argument of a lot of, um, probably t from teachers and adults and stuff when I told them I wanted to do fashion. And mainly because I was also good academically. Like when it came to core subjects like English, math, science, my teacher says he's bad. But um, I didn't really want to go into any of those in that sense. I wanted to do something creative because, to be honest, it was something that I love. So having now at a young age to also justify that to adults or justify that to people around you, like, are you sure you want to do this? Like, are you sure? Because, you know, it's hard. It's difficult. Like, people always struggle. Oh, so-and-so, you know, their daughter, they went into that thing and, ah, you see them struggling now. You know, she's back where she started. And you now you're being compared to others and it doesn't give you that room to breathe. That, that was a lot of stress, but I think that challenge helped me to be like, no, I need to, I need to prove them wrong. And I also need to prove myself wrong because when things are being repeated so much, when certain statements are being spoken into existence, sometimes it brings it into life and you start believing it. And I didn't want that. So I had to keep on telling myself that, now, nah, Glenna, you love this course. You love making clothes because you love seeing an end product, you know, you love seeing something that you create in your mind come into like, like materialize, then just do it. So doing small projects, making clothes for people, I started seeing that, wow, oh, I can actually get money for this, you know? And then even people around me started realizing that, yeah, you can actually start getting money from this. So um, yeah, that, that helps. But yeah, th there was pressures from, yeah, from teachers, from, Peer, like, like my parents peers mainly um and also i would even say probably pressure in the industry itself um 
fashion is a very cutthroat industry. It is very fast, it is very aggressive. Now, you have to be able to balance that idea of you being aggressive in, in a professional setting, but you being someone who's also approachable. That, that your work or that aggression that you have does not taint your character, does not taint you as a person. And I think that's also some another, a new pressure that's coming up. Being able to be someone who can do business, someone who can be cutthroat and get the job done and get them designs out there and meet the you know customers and get the orders and get the money, but also in all that, still be someone who's respectful, still be someone who is charismatic, still be someone who is still a people's person. And I think um, sometimes that can get lost when it gets into the professional world, when it's just all about you know, hitting the numbers, but you kind of forget where the real love started. Because with a lot of people that I work around, we all started from having a love for something in design, having a love for, you know, the materials and the whole process of fabricating a vision into reality. So now when that's lost and you get into this whole whirlwind of probably capitalism, that that's dangerous and that's another pressure. So it really has to be something that is um, intentional when you get into the whole workforce about why am I here? Why am I doing what I'm doing? What is my purpose? What do I want the end goal to be? In the next 10 years, what do I want to look back and be happy with the person I am now, who I've now become? because you can get the best job in the world and you can get the best money but if you lose yourself in the midst of that you lose the love that you had initially and you you kind of um, forget about edifying the people around you and edifying yourself it's almost going to feel as if them 10 years weren't something to hold on to you weren't memories to really grasp onto and you're going to try and you know push them into the back of your mind and all that so yeah there are definitely pressures like that okay so what gives you the drive or motivation to keep working hard okay um first and foremost would be the people who brought me into this world are my parents i think seeing them hustle from when um we were young you see their work ethic, mainly to provide, but also in the sense of just to achieve, achieve greater in a setting that, in an environment that's different because they came from Tanzania in the, in the early 90s. So to see these guys grind, do three jobs, or my dad's regular testimony about, oh, you know, I was in school and I had two jobs and I had a wife and I had two babies and life was... like. That testimony of his, <laughs> he loves it so much, but it is big and um, yeah, like a daily push that my parents have been doing for the last 20 odd years reminds me as to how much I need to keep pushing as well to one, give back to them for all that they have sacrificed for us because um, even career-wise or certain goals had to be set aside for my parents to actually provide even more for us you know like there were certain careers that my parents were in that they had to set aside to do these common jobs to be able to put food on the table to be able to regulate their hours working night shifts so they can have the day with their kids serious sacrifices were made that I'm reminded every day that right oh, you need to keep on pushing to give back to these guys but to also build what they've started because these guys are still working in their mid 50s and their 60s when they thought they were going to retire a time ago but they're still out here grinding and it just reminds me that yeah i need to start setting these goals putting this money aside saving making the investments that i need to be doing but all in all just doing something that i know i can also pass on to my kids or my kids will also be able to see me me work hard but that they'll also be a little bit more comfortable I think with every generation, you want to be that much more um, better or achieve that much more than the parents. Because your parents or your grandparents, they open the doors, they open the way for you to go through. 
So now it's your point to be on that new level, but then to open the way for the next generation. That four or five generation from now, it's just going to be legacies, right? Legacies of <clears throat> parents, grandparents, great grandparents from the past. So yeah, my parents definitely motivate me to keep on hustling and stuff. Um, what else motivates me is the initial love that I found for making clothes. Like, I think it being something that I used to play around with as a kid or like hand sewing little dresses together till I made my first dress for someone and it fit them perfectly. I remember that day and how happy I was and how happy I was with how the customer felt in something that I'd sewn for her. That it's always a reminder that, you know what? Being able to just envision an idea and then have it fabricate and then have someone wear an outfit and feel so good in their in themselves and what they're wearing because clothes sometimes also go beyond a, a way of adorning yourself. I think clothes also represent an aspect of you, you know, your kind of your identity, how you dress and and how you carry yourself. It is a visual representation of yourself to the general public. Otherwise, if it wasn't, we'd all be walking around naked. So because we wear clothes, some people wear it for practical reasons, while people also wear it to express themselves at times. Having the tools to be able to create something like that for someone and have them feel happy and comfortable, that is so exciting. So the more, the more I work, I want to keep on seeing that, um, do I want to say happiness or seeing that level of result basically in all the clients I work with and yeah with all the clients I work with that it's not just going to be about say the profit or say the recognition it's going to be about that moment or probably the intimate moment that you have with each client in bringing something to life that they also envision that that is what also motivates me that's what keeps me going because I'm like the more experience I get the more skill I build in this craft that I have of these hands the better I'll be in achieving in achieving those goals and in making the people I make clothes for a lot more happier as well. And it and all in all, one day I do hope that this can be something that is shared, not only my skill, but something that I can share with other people, something that you can train others. Because I feel as if with things like sewing, things like making clothes, it's probably a skill that is dying a little bit these days, you know. Home economics isn't taught as much in school to as it used to be, but it's something that you can take with you everywhere. It's something that you don't need so many tools to do that you can literally put food on the table by just doing it. So if I can go back and just give, bring this skill back to life again, whether creating communities or schooling or or like academies of some sort one day, then, then that would be amazing because it would be able to help so many people, I think to also carry on making stuff and making clothes and making people happy in what they wear. So yeah.